Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. TV. I'm your host, Mark Fuss. We're here with another episode of the show, and I've got Eric here with Chateau La Pointe. Did I, did I do all right? Okay. Um, as always, my French is hopefully improving. Um, he's the uh, general manager. General manager. General manager of the Chateau. Uh, he's been kind enough to allow me to come in and spend some time with him uh, during harvest. Uh, to, uh, here at the Chateau. Uh, we've just finished doing a little tour of the, uh, of the facility, of the grounds, uh, going out to the vineyards, uh, tasting some grapes, which was awesome, um, and then just kind of going through, you know, seeing the sorting table and all the other typical winery things. Um, they all pretty much look the same uh, once you get inside the building, but um, talk about the history and all that. So we're going to uh, taste some wine and we're just going to go from that. So Eric, why don't you let everyone know a little bit more about you and, and about, the, uh, about the winery here at the Chateau. Yeah, so um, as a summary, I can say that uh, La Pointe is one of the biggest estates of, uh, of this great appellation, which is uh, Pombole, because we are producing an average of 100,000 bottles a year, which is quite uh, rare in, in Pombole, and um, which is quite exciting with this, uh, with this chateau, this new project, is that uh, all professionals agree to say that La Pointe already produces some uh, good quality wine. But all the professionals agree to say as well that uh, there, there are a big potential to express uh, here. So um, uh, it's what you have done for the last four years. Uh, we have a uh, hard job and big works uh, in, in the vineyard uh, by a drainage system, for, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, new winery, and um, the idea is, is just, to, as I told you, express the full potential, uh, make the wine uh, better and much more precise or with more complexity or more density. So we can first taste uh, 05, which is okay. a, a good example of uh, what the, the, the style was for, uh, for La Pointe. Okay. And, uh, we, we see that uh, it was very, very serious, uh, but um, it's interesting because such a vintage, uh, uh, which is very interesting, uh, we know that after drainage system and better control of the yields and after better ripeness and with uh, plot by plot management and so on, uh, we can do even even better, okay. which is really exciting. So, so what we've been doing for the past few years is, is kind of upgrading everything. And, and like we talked about in the vineyard, it's, it's a lot of it is your vineyard management, not necessarily the wizardry, as we yeah. talked about, yeah. of, of in the winery of, of manipulating everything, but really looking at the looking at how things are in the vineyard and making sure it starts there and not not uh, ignore it, not, not ignore what's going on on the vine, but really pay attention to that and then bring it into the wine, into the winery. Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, for the last, in, during the last decade, um, all the chateau uh, made big progress uh, just because we just uh, realized that um, even if it's an evi evidence, but we just uh, realized that a, a good quality wine is, is prepared in the vineyard and not in the winery. Right. Mm -hmm. In the winery, you are only uh, express, uh, but you don't transform, you just express. So uh, the big job now is in the vineyard and we rediscover that, yeah. Okay. So you are in Pomerol, so it's uh, the best terroir for, the, for Merlot. Um, you have more than 80% of Merlot in, in the blend, mm -hmm. which is quite typical for the appellation. And uh, so Merlot wines are very, uh, very, very, very round, very smooth, very elegant, and uh, right. very charming. Mm -hmm. not, you don't have, it's not like, a, they're, they're, they're not as big and bold maybe as a Cabernet Sauvignon uh, uh, wine. There's a little bit lighter, you know, like I said, a little more elegant. I thought that elegant, I think, is a great way to put that. I mean, if, of course. A big advantage with the Pomerol wine, with the Merlot wine of Pomerol, is that uh, uh, even if you drink it uh, younger, I mean, it's 
not a crime, you know. Right. <laughs> it's not a crime, and uh, you can uh, you, you can't uh, you can drink it quite quite earlier. And of but the opposite, you can keep it uh, quite long. Uh, vintage as 05 or 09, you can keep such a vintage uh, more than uh, 12 or 15 years and even 20 years for the very best vintage, you know. But what is very magical with um, Bon Roland Merlot is that you can keep it quite as long as the uh, less bank wine. Mm -hmm. But um, if you're not courageous enough, you can drink it after four or five years. You know? Okay. Um, so with this, you know, there's I get a lot more of the, the vegetal type of thing, the, the kind of the pepper and there's there's a bit of fruit but more spice and, and vegetal vegetable or vegetable, you know, green than uh, than fruit off of it. But on the nose I kind of get um, like really dark dark berries and maybe even a little chocolate. Still very fresh. Right? It's mm -hmm. quite calm. I mean, 05, 05 uh, two days. It's uh, very beginning to drink it, but uh, there's such a potential to, to be kept that um, uh, this wine can you can you can keep it ten more years without right. without any problem. It's just the very beginning of, uh, of the drink drinkability. Yeah. Okay. That's it, yeah. What you were we were talking about um, out in the vineyard that you have three circles yeah. in Pomerol. So kind of go over that real quick with. With everyone, yeah, I mean it, the, um, the appellation is quite easy to um, to, to sum up because we have the, the first circle on, on, on the top of the hill of Pomor with um, the, the big kings like uh, uh -huh. Petrus or La Tonsayante or Vieux Chateau Setan, for instance. After that, you have a second rings and, and, and the third rings and Chateau La Pointe is definitely on the top of the second rings, just at the beginning of the first ring, which is quite interesting because we can uh, we kind of change, you know, to. Uh, and to improve the quality, to improve the quality at, at uh, this uh, proper place. So. And that's where, when the, the ownership changed, you you recognize that you were where you're at in that ring, and you want you to realize the fuller potential of, of yeah. what you had versus what was before. So what we have here is what was before, and yeah. now we're going to drink what we're right, so what now that you now that you're going after the what your full potential is. So in, in fact. Um, what, the result of our, our works for the last four years is to be uh, uh, much more precise. Uh, so the wines are uh, more clear, uh, more more precise, and uh, more uh, more complexity, more density. I mean, it's not completely different, but everything is uh, everything is a bit more okay. uh, improved. Yeah. I'm not fond of. Uh, I'm not looking for a very low yield and a very concentrated wine. And mm -hmm. I'm still looking for freshness. For instance, when I'm looking for a good ripeness, uh, I'm not looking for over ripeness. You know, I just want it, I just want to be to be ripe. And uh, this O9 is definitely very fresh, very fruity, very well balanced, more concentrated than O5, but um, as a much more precise. Yes. More. You know, even though it's a much younger wine, I probably, if, if it was just completely blind, you told me there's an 09 and an 05 here, and didn't tell me which one, I probably couldn't tell you the difference. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, the the 05, I mean, it's, you know, it's in where it should be, you know, drinkability wise, the 09 does, it has a nice freshness to it, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a, a young wine. Um, so I mean, it, it's I think it's got a good maturity to it. Um, you know, I, I get, and I guess what it is, I get more of the fruit from this now, and I also get more of that chocolate. Um, whereas this, I'm getting more of the more of the, uh, the minerality and even a little bit of like like dirt and dust uh, or wood. Actually, was getting more of the wood. Whereas with this one, I don't get that as much. But I mean, if if O5 is a child. Of O9 is a baby, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you really have to appreciate it for its for its, for its potential. And uh, O9 has been but has been bottled only uh, before the summer, you know. So um, so yeah, I mean, even even with being so young, I think it's got it's got some really good structure underneath, so that it's going to mature very well. Um, 
I mean, I if I had to choose between two, I would I would prefer the 09 the just O9. because I think um, as far as I drink it right now, type one, I think the 09 I is more more of my preference. Mm -hmm. But I think also that it will it will mature into something. I think that's going to be a better wine, at least for for what I like out of wine. Yeah. Hopefully, mm -hmm. other people will agree too. <laughs> No, I don't agree yeah. on it. Ofa is perfect and it's a real uh, classical, uh, a very good classical pommel wine. Mm -hmm. uh, very nice to drink and uh, uh, I can promise you that with the Côte de Boeuf, uh, there's no problem with that. <laughs> right, it's Ofa. But O09 is uh, even, even very young, uh, even as a baby, it's uh, very well balanced and uh, very smoothy and very yes. young. And usually we are, we are surprised because you can imagine that such a young wine must be very strong. And uh, yeah, and it's, and everything is, is, uh, is balanced. Right, it's, it, yeah, because it is so young, you would expect there to maybe not be as balanced. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nice and balanced. Like I said, I, I would think it would, you know, you, I wouldn't know the difference um, yeah. necessarily. And now, that also might be from my inexperience in, in tasting wines, you know, vertical tastings, uh, and, and me uh, actually analyzing wines and how old it is and all that. And that's the type of stuff that I have to be doing. I have to be working on for um, uh, the Court of Messer um tests. In the, mm -hmm. you know, the next level tests, you have to actually taste and evaluate wines blindly. You know, you have to do a blind taste test. Um, you don't have to, I don't have to necessarily say it's from a plant, but I have to at least <laughs> get, you know, what, what, what region, how, what year, or at least get close to the vintage um, and, and get at least narrow it down that it's a Pomerol wine and not just it's a French wine, you know. <laughs> um, so that's, that's the type of stuff I'm working on, but you know, having this type of uh, comparison, um, you know, it helps me out. But uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, I mean, the 05, nothing wrong with the 05. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I think for my preference, uh, I would prefer the 05, but I, I can easily drink the 05. I mean, it has elements that I like in the yeah, it, and there's nothing wrong it's with it. It's quite um, so I mean, if you're out there and you're, and you're looking and you, and you see it, an 05 on the shelf, you know, definitely get it. Um, nothing wrong with it, but you know, I cannot wait to see how this turns out in a few more years. Yeah, as only if you want to be uh, very, very honest, uh, La Pointe, as I told you, all professionals agree to say that it was good quality right. and a very exciting challenge in that we have to uh, to push the estate from uh, very good to excellent, mm -hmm. and that's why it's very exciting as well. Yeah. Nice. Um, you were telling me um, just for everyone out there, uh, La Pointe, what. I mean, it's, it's the point of the triangle, but you were talking about how the vineyard is set up. Uh, so kind of explain that real quick. Yeah, just, it's usually we are always wondering the, the origin of the name of right. the chateau, and Chateau La Pointe. In fact, La Pointe in French means uh, a shape uh, like a triangle. You know? Okay. So, and I can imagine that when uh, um, people in the past just uh, cross uh, near the chateau, they say, okay, I'm, I'm just uh, crossing La Pointe, and uh, the, the name just, just uh, this kind of yeah. evolved from that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so easy. It just does like that. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, um, like I said, these these wines are wonderful. I see the water. Got a little dehydrated from from the trip here, but um, both wines are excellent. If you can find either one, uh, either one would be a great buy. Um, you you could drink the O9 now, but you probably want to wait a little bit uh, just so let it let it let it evolve a little more. But if you if you're thirsty, you can drink it. You know, I mean, wine, wine's meant for drinking. I mean, yes, we want to let it mature a little bit, but ultimately, it's meant to be drunk and not sat in a, not put in someone's wine cellar for a hundred years and never to be enjoyed. I mean, this is something that you do to enjoy, not just to invest. Uh, at least that's my view. I know some other people may disagree that you know they, they buy wine to invest, but I I buy it to drink. <laughs> I buy it to drink. Uh, earlier today, um, at uh, the other chateau I was at, there were some other visitors, and um, a gentleman was from Hong Kong, and he, we were having going to have lunch, and he was like, "Why is for drinking?" And I was like, "I think this guy." <laughs> <laughs> you know. Right. You know? Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely uh, something that uh, I would suggest anyone to to go out and uh, uh, buy if, if you can find it. So. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about with, with uh, the Chateau or anything? Uh, 
Nothing. We are. Um, no, maybe I'm, I forget to tell you that uh, uh, somebody um, helped me for the last four years uh, very, uh, very seriously to, to wake up, uh, to wake up the, the Sleeping Beauty. Okay. And in fact, um, uh, a good friend of mine is uh, Hubert de Bois from Chateau Angelus, uh, which is uh, so famous. And in fact, uh, you know, our job is just like uh, you, you need uh, years and years and years to learn. Of course, uh, we know about economy and we know about energy, but we need uh, we need years and years and vintage and vintage to to really uh, uh, understand this uh, fascinating job. And uh, somebody like uh, Hubert de Bois from Chateau Angelus is our, in a way our consultant okay. and, uh, and really uh, gave us. Um, Good advice and good help to, to express this uh, this level of precious and quality. So, uh, and and <clears throat> speaking of that, with with everybody in Pomerol and even with uh, San Leon, is there is there so you're all effectively competitors, but at the same time you're all you all want everyone to succeed. Is that is that kind of the yeah? On, on top of that, uh, Pomerol uh, is, is the smallest appellation. You know, it's only seven hundred and eighty-five acres. You know, compared to the 5,000 hectares in saint emilion The uh, Pomerol is definitely a little bit beat and right. very rare. So, yeah, we are not so much competitors because uh, um, famous is, uh, Pomerol is very, very famous mm -hmm. and it's not so, we are very happy with that. It's not so difficult for us uh, with Pomerol. So, no, it's, it's a good um, uh, good challenge for all of them. And we are lucky, we are a member of the uh, Union des Grands Crus de Bordeaux. Which is, you know, a, a, a group of the 130 uh, uh, best uh, producers in, okay. in Bordeaux, and uh, yes, it's a very good, uh, very good promotion, and we go all over the world just to to explain um, and exchange with all the people fascinated by wine. So that it's uh, we are working all together for that. Yeah, and I, I can say that you know, uh, talking with people from all over the world about about wine, and the, I'm talking to winemakers, um, is that. Uh, you will get that sense of, of camaraderie and community from within. You know, I know that when I toured all the Texas wineries, um, they they were all like, look, you know, they they want each if, if one succeeds, everybody succeeds. I mean, and I know that in California, especially when things were starting to uh, take, you know, really start taking off in the seventies and eighties, they had that type of, you know, they're not they're they're a competitor, but they're not. They're really. You know, they're, they're they're your friends too because yeah. you know they're next they're your next next door neighbors in many ways. Like coming here was, you know, going to Texas and, and visiting wineries. Um, the amount of drive time that I did here uh, to get here, I would have only passed maybe five or six. <laughs> okay, yeah. folks, there's hundreds <laughs> between thousands between here and Pontiac that I I, I I know I personally passed probably a hundred. At least a hundred, or at least saw signs that I could just a quick little turn here, a quick little turn there. I would be at, at, at some chateau somewhere uh, within within a couple of minutes, not not you know 20, 30 minutes. I could have you know pulled into a lot of a lot of places. So um, it, it's one of those things where I, I had you know I had the destinations, but there was always that oh I could ooh, I could turn here, I could turn here, but um, so definitely. Uh, uh, probably closer to what people are used to in the Napa Valley in Sonoma County, where uh, there's there's lots of lots of wineries close to each other, whereas in Texas they're, they're so spread out. So coming here, seeing just they're one after the other, one after the other, um, and so you'll have that, that sense of community, and um, you know, so it's really great to see all that because uh, everyone talks well of everybody else, yeah. you know, because you're all in the same business, and you you it ultimately you know if. if if, if some if other people are succeeding, that will help. We, it'll bring other people. You know, it brings you know, like everyone in Pomerol, Pomerol's famous, so everyone here just you know has that extra bit of uh, uh, help to succeed. So yeah, the link, the link for all of them is a uh, is a terroir on the the love of the, of the ground, you know, right. the wine. At the very end, we are competitors, but not so much. In fact, mm -hmm. Not so much because the the, the product of uh, uh, Grand Cru and Grand Cru Classé. Is so small in a way compared to the world market mm -hmm. that uh, of course we are competitors at the very end but in a way not so much and the, the link to to the terroir and the appellation and the, the fact that we are we love the, the vineyard right. is really the strongest uh, thing in fact yeah because at the end of the day you you all have the same goal to make great wine and and to see everyone succeed and 
uh, you know, and, and, and have, that, have that great success. So uh, I would say this has been wonderful uh, for you to take, take the hour or so time out of your day um, to, to show you this wonderful facility and, and the grounds um, and have some wonderful wine. And uh, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, just folks, as, as always, I want to you know, thank everyone for stopping in. Um, the, uh, we've got, I've got more coming. So I've got another, I don't know, like four, three, three more, four more. Three or four more places to go in the next couple days, uh, so we're going to be, yeah, so we're going to be uh, going all over, and then um, uh, I also did some other reviews of the hotel. <laughs> I went to the supermarket and bought like just average wine, and just it was average, but it was all right. Uh, <laughs> it was not as good as this, trust me. But um, uh, this has been a wonderful trip, and. Uh, We'll see everyone again. Uh, thank you again. Thanks for stopping in. We'll see everyone again next time. And uh, just stay tuned for more, uh, more reviews from uh, the Bordeaux area. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you.